Hi, it's Rob Tibbings from ECT for Health. Uh, I often get questions about oxygen transport uh, in the blood. Uh, I guess I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about haemoglobin, but before there, uh, let's just very, very briefly have a look at uh, how oxygen is transported in the blood. Let's say this test tube represented all of your blood. We know that about 35% of that test tube is cells and the rest of it is essentially plasma. Now, within the cells of your blood, the vast majority of the cells in your blood are the red blood cells. And it's the red blood cells that contain that really important molecule called haemoglobin. And it's the haemoglobin that does the oxygen carriage in your blood. In fact, approximately 97% of all the oxygen in your blood is being carried in your haemoglobin inside your red blood cell. The other 3% is actually carried in the plasma, in the water of your blood. It's dissolved, the gas is dissolved into your blood and it exerts a pressure. When we measure the oxygen in your plasma, we call that a pressure. We usually measure it with arterial blood gases, so it's called a pressure of arterial oxygen. And the normal value is 80 to 100 millimetres of mercury. It's a pressure reading. We do this with an arterial blood gas. But when we want to measure the amount of oxygen, the net amount of oxygen that your haemoglobin is carrying, we actually measure that by putting a saturation probe on somebody's finger. And we're measuring then a saturation of arterial oxygen if we took a blood test from an artery, or if we just used the finger probe, we call it a saturation of pulsatile oxygen. And you'll recall that the normal value is about 94 to 99%. Once it gets lower than 94, we call that hypoxemia. So the principle here is that 97% of all of your oxygen is carried in your haemoglobin inside your red blood cell. So let's have a look at a haemoglobin molecule. Oh, let me at it, they say. So a haemoglobin molecule, the closest thing that I can relate a haemoglobin molecule is uh, to, you know that little cardboard container that they give you at a coffee shop when you have to buy four cups of coffee to, for, for a group of people? And you're carrying all of those coffees in a small tray that's dedicated to hold four cups of coffee. Well, haemoglobin's exactly the same. There's about 250 million haemoglobin molecules in every single red blood cell. You've got 75 trillion red blood cells. So 250 million times 75 trillion, that's a huge number. The important point is that just like that cardboard um, coffee cup holder, the single haemoglobin molecule is capable of just carrying four oxygens. So the first oxygen binds to the receptor site on the haemoglobin molecule. And when that happens, what happens is that the heme starts to change colour. It actually glows a little bit red. It's made with iron, and iron, as it oxidises, turns red. It rusts. This switches on the second receptor site, which binds with oxygen. And we draw oxygen as two little circles because oxygen is O2. It's a diatomic molecule, meaning two molecules of oxygen joined together. As it binds to this second site, the heme glows a little bit more red. It switches on the third receptor site, which predictably makes it even more red. That then switches on the fourth receptor site. And it's at this point that we call this haemoglobin molecule 100% saturated. You know, that's what we're looking for and at when we measure someone's sats. We're looking at haemoglobins. We're looking at how saturated with oxygen a haemoglobin is. Each individual haemoglobin molecule is considered to be 100% saturated when it has four oxygens attached to it. In arterial blood, all four binding sites, in a normal healthy individual, all four binding sites have an oxygen attached in arterial blood. 
But then that oxygen, that, that haemoglobin or that red blood cell carrying haemoglobin molecules travels out to the body. It delivers off oxygen to the cells that require it and it returns in venous blood a little bit less red. In fact, we often say venous blood is blue blood or it's a dusky colour. And it is because venous blood is not 100% saturated. Venous blood, and I'll draw it in vivid blue, is only about 75% saturated. This means that it's given up one of those molecules of oxygen to a cell that required it for its normal function. Venous blood, 75% saturated, normally arterial blood to the tune of 94 to 99% or functionally 100% saturated. Hemoglobin, 97% of your oxygen carrying capacity.